Francis Cabot Lowell The Beginning Francis was born on April 7, 1775 in Newsbury's Massachusetts. When Francis was one, his father moved the, his family to Boston. In Boston is where he got his education. At age 14, Francis enter, entered Harvard. An interesting story about Lowell is that at his senior year of college, he was kicked off the main campus. He started a bonfire on the campus, so Harvard made Francis study at Bridgewater. When he graduated college, he worked with his uncle until 1810. In their import-export business, they became rather wealthy. Also, when his father died, he was given $80,000 in the will. Francis married Susan Cabot, the daughter of an immensely wealthy shipping family. When Francis became sick, this forced him forced him to go on a prolonged journey to the British Isles. This trip was fraught with great significance for the future American industry. Rise to Wealth when, While Francis was in England, he studied the power loom. He was immensely fascinate, fascinated by them, so he took sketches and notes on how they were built and how they worked. When he returned to America in 1812, he was determined to build a textile factory. With the War of 1812 going on, he decided to start building his business locally. With the aid of a mechanical genius, Paul Moody, spinning machinery and a practical power loom were created in America. In 1812, Francis Law and other business businessmen established what they called the Boston Manufacturing Company. With the money they had prepared, they bought land along the Charles River at Wal Walham. Massachusetts, and later along the Merrimack River. The First Factory In Waltham, Massachusetts, factories were built and they were powered by water. These were known as the first factories in America. In 1814, machines were put into the factories and they began working. This was the first time in history where cotton could be produced into a cloth under one roof. Operation of the Factory To keep the mill running with money, Francis made it a joint stock company. This meant that people could invest in the company and receive money back. To find a labor force for the factory, Lyle looked towards single women from rural, rural areas. There were many of them, and they were cheap and they were cheap. Women were paid less than men and law considered them more reliable. These girls were considered law girls. They, watched, they were watched very strictly. They had one day off which was Sunday. They were required to go to church on Sunday and they were watched by an elder. Based on a new machine, the power loom. Raw cotton comes in, finished cloth goes out, all under one roof. The modern factory is born. Lowell, Massachusetts is called the city of spindles, a textiles boom town. Population explodes from 200 in 1820 to nearly 20,000 in just 15 years. More than a third of the town works in the mills. 85% are single women between 15 and 25. Tariffs. Francis was one of the main supporters of tariffs for foreign countries. It is understandable why, because he did not want to compete with other countries for his business. A tariff is a tax on a good. In this case, a tariff, tariff was a tax on cotton and cloth. Lao devised a tariff that, that made the northern and southern states happy. The tariff of 1816 was structured in such a way as to fall most heavily on low quality cloth from India and China that competed most directly with the New England pr product. High quality British cloth would be less affected. In fact, the tariff appears to have provided protection against British cloth as well. At their initial surge, imports from Britain remained well below their pre-war levels, while New England textile production grew rapidly.
The self-destructive conflict at Eastern was a familiar old story to American companies. It can be traced to the beginnings of the wage system and the first arrangements between workers and owners in America's early factories. Early in the 19th century, three quarters of American property owners worked for themselves. These farmers and craftsmen owned their own businesses, so they had a personal and financial stake in their success. In 1813, Massachusetts merchant Francis Cabot Lowell built America's first factory, a four-story cotton mill that organized all the tasks of carding, spinning, and weaving under one roof. The efficiency of Lowell's new power loom made obsolete the slower skills of many independent weavers and sewers. By 1823, a town bearing Lowell's name hosted a huge complex of textile mills. To staff its new plants, Lowell recruited women from farms all over New England. The mill owners lodged them in boarding houses known as the Palaces of the Poor, where they were strictly chaperoned by matrons of high character. The Lowell girls, as they were called, gave up the self-sufficiency of farm life for a weekly wage. They were soon joined in the mills by immigrants and the independent weavers and sewers whom the new factories had replaced. Death and Beyond Francis Cabot Lowell died at age 42 in 1817. His family gained control of the mills when he died and yet they still prospered. After his death, many more factories opened in his name. There's a town created for workers that also bore his name. The town had schools, fire station, church, churches, and a library that is still in use today. In the town of Lowell, MA, in Massachusetts, the population exceeded 20,000 people. The net worth of the town and factories was $8 million. Overview Francis had a major role in the industrialization of America. He was among the first to use industrial espionage, among the first to build factories in America, among the first to create towns for factories, and most importantly, he was able to help industrialize the rest of America. With, it, with it, the help of tariffs, he was able to help the economy grow. His town was the basis for towns all across America today. Overall, Francis Cabot Law was an important man, and without him, nobody's life would be the same today.